Hi, I'm Dr. Tim McKaig, a lecturer in software systems engineering at the University of Regina. I'm quite excited to talk to you today about our project around looking at how technology can provide more patient-centered virtual home care experiences in Saskatchewan and beyond. I feel our team of Ramona, Sheriff, Bill, and myself are in a really unique spot to explore a systems approach to it all, from data and information management to public policy to design of useful, usable, and inclusive technologies. It's going to be an interesting and fruitful experience, I suspect. I'm going to share, to you, share with you some slides about our project from a technology software systems engineering perspective. All right, so I'd like to talk about my why with respect to exploring, designing, and developing more patient-centered virtual home care experiences in Saskatchewan. Now, my parents here, pictured here, <laughs> they're in their late 60s. And for the last several years, my dad in particular, pictured here with his grandchildren, super gramps, <laughs> has been trying to convince us kids, so I have four, three siblings, to an older sister, a younger sister, and a younger brother, uh, with the idea of building a multi-generational home, where each of us have our own unique spaces for our respective families, but we're all in close proximity with each other so that we can support each other as best we can. So this was pre-pandemic, and to be honest, uh, when my dad first proposed this to all of us, we laughed and thought it would be, it wasn't the best idea that he came up with. We all like our spaces, and quite frankly, our indif individual families, it's hard, we're hard enough to coordinate. Now, fast forward to now, having lived through now a year of a pandemic, the importance of family for all of us has been very much emphasized. All of our attitudes have shifted and the importance of family support, connection and community laid out for all of us to experience over the last year. Now, with my parents aging and with the experiences of the pandemic, my dad's initial ideas actually make a lot of sense to me now. We likely would have been better off had we all been together during the last year and Zoom helped. So this is us at Christmas time, you know, having our Zoom Christmas. But the more I reflect on all of this, even if we had been together in this multi-generational home of my dad's imagination, being together still would have posed challenges with respect to adequately supporting everybody, particularly when I reflect as my parents get older. As my parents age, this is on my mind. You know, I don't think of us kids can actually do it alone. You know, recent statistics indicate that most people uh, will try their level-headed best to steer clear of long-term care homes post-pandemic. And this highlights even more the importance of that family connection, that family support, but also that family community. And it highlights the need to expand all of the, all of the above as the responsibility expands to not only families, but those in support of families. Now, as a software system engineer, questions I have with respect to all this from a technology perspective is through technology support, can we move towards something more humane, towards fostering better connections, towards better support of each other, towards better trust, towards better community, family or otherwise, as families can't do it on their own. So one of the classes I teach at the university is the software systems capstone, software systems engineering capstone class. So this is where students embark on a year long journey to design and develop interesting technologies, particularly from a software lens. This is where I met Bill Pratt of Eden Care Communities. Bill came to pitch an idea to my students around reinventing how home care services are administered. Such technologies currently exist in the marketplace. However, there's gaps with respect to the technologies fostering quality family connections, quality trust, quality of care, of care, and quality of community. Now, a group of students thought Bill's idea was fantastic and they got together. The students being Nicholas Actor, Nicholas Schmidt, Nicholas Lenvoy, and Shayan Khan, known as the Knicks. There's three Knicks and one S there for Shayan. <laughs> they set out to design and develop a prototype or a proof of concept as a mobile application that enables home care patients to order and have delivered to their homes a variety of home care services. The app explored the management of home care staff as well to manage orders and to ensure quality and timeliness of care. And the results proved quite illuminating, but there's still more to do. And that's where we come in. So we're going to explore over the next year and beyond the overarching theme being, can technology be designed in a more humane way to enable people to age comfortably at home, fostering better symbiotic connections between patients, their families, and care providers.
Hello, I'm Cheryl Camillo, co-principal investigator on the Care on Demand project, along with Drs. Ramona Chabago and Tim McKay. It's nice to meet you, albeit virtually. I hope that you're enjoying the spring. I know for me, the sunshine and the increased pace of vaccinations across Canada gives me hope that there is a brighter future ahead for our seniors. It was a particularly dark year, of course, and I felt that personally when my otherwise strong 98-year-old grandmother passed away in a COVID-infected nursing home in April. But I see a silver lining in the cloud, and that's that this has finally highlighted the need to transform care for aging now rather than to talk about it for another decade or two. I'm determined to seize this policy opportunity before the window closes, and I hope that you will join me to make change. As a former senior policymaker in the US where I work to expand access to coverage and services for many populations, including seniors, I found that we achieve success when we work closely with beneficiaries, providers, and other stakeholders. So I hope we'll work together in developing a patient-centered care ordering tool that is useful for providers as well as the health system at large. Until then, take care and enjoy the rest of the conference. So welcoming attendees of Engage 2021. My name is Ramona Chibegu. I am the principal investigator for the Care on Demand project, where I work alongside researchers, Dr. Cheryl Camillo and Dr. Tim McCaig, as well as our community partner, Eating Care Communities, where I work specifically with Bill Pratt and Michelle Zolniak. Uh, you should be quite proud uh, to know that Eating Care Communities were the ones who engaged us with this wonderful idea. And we're certainly happy to work collaboratively with them to develop what we believe is the future of home care. Um, I first, before I get into my presentation, I just wanted to speak briefly about my personal connection to this community. My mother is a geriatric nurse, and she has been a geriatric nurse for about uh, 30 years. She's almost near retirement. Uh, she works at uh, Parkwood Hospital in London, Ontario, where she provides care to veterans. Um, so she spent most of her career, uh, what she says is that she's serving those who have served us, and it's really the um, highlight of her career to be working with the veterans. Often, um, you know, as a, as, as a child, as a teenager, and, and going up, I would visit her on her lunch break, where I would get a chance to uh, talk to the veterans, to hear their stories, to meet the families of the veterans, um, their, uh, the grandchildren and the children of the veterans. Um, and we have lots of crafts and gifts from the veterans and their family, uh, families around our house. And so this community is a community that, um, you know, really means a lot to me. And I'm excited to be working with the older adults and this population as we develop our solution. So what is Care On Demand? Um, essentially, Care On Demand is a home care ordering service solution. Um, it's essentially uh, being developed to help support those who want to age in place. That means to receive home care services um, and, and not uh, prematurely go into a long-term care facilities. Um, our home um, uh, care app application um, has many important features and I believe many features will be developed in future as we continue to engage with providers or service providers um, and clients in terms of the things that they need in order to support them to receive care at home. I just wanted to talk a little bit, um, you know, I'd be re remiss if I did not mention um, some of the challenges that we've seen in the long-term care sector as it relates to COVID-19. Um, various factors such as overcrowding, uh, infrastructure constraints, you know, equitable access uh, to services have impacted um, the high rates of uh, mortality and morbidity that we've seen in uh, long-term care um, as a result of COVID-19. Home care is a really important solution because it can help to address this emergent infection of COVID-19 by allowing clients to stay at home. We do know about other benefits like allowing individuals to stay in their communities where they obviously feel very connected and they have a sense of belonging. We want to give them the option to continue to maintain their independence. And this is often um, the preference of most clients. Uh, we believe that our technology solution will be beneficial in a number of ways. As a health information management professional, I often look at the information itself and how this technology solution will improve fragmentation of information. 
Continuity is a challenge in all parts of the healthcare system, but it is especially a challenge in long-term care. What we're dealing with is a lot of transfers and transitions of people, which requires them to know about existing services to essentially navigate um, their way through the system. By having a technology solution where we can put all of the available services in one place, we're essentially making it easier for people to see what services are available. And it will also make it easier for us to see where there are existing gaps within communities and to try to fill those gaps. Informational continuity also exists as it relates to the exchange of information. There are many stakeholders with different information needs. The clients themselves would like to have information about their care. This we would essentially call a personal health record where they can see um, the record of care that they've had over time. They may also be interested in other things. Uh, clients may be interested in financing, being able to better manage their financing. So having the cost of services tied to the services that have been delivered. And we could provide that with this app. Uh, also families want to know that their um, loved ones, um, the care, they wanna know about the care that they're receiving. And so our app could help to make it a little bit more transparent um, to ensure that um, when families cannot uh, be uh, with um, their loved ones because of restrictions like COVID-19, the app could help to ensure that they're receiving the quality and consistent care um, um, that, th that they deserve. Another important stakeholder that could benefit from improvements in terms of the exchange of information through this app are home care providers. Some home care providers have multiple jobs and say so they could better manage um, uh, the distribution of their work by having an app like this where they could schedule many of their appointments. It's also quite helpful for administrators to um, essentially uh, manage the providers um, through this app um, where they could check in or check out and they could see essentially where the provider is along the way so that if a provider is running late, they could give you a call to let you know that the, that the, that the uh, provider may be five minutes late or so, but I, I doubt that would be the case with eating care communities. Uh, we also want to be able to provide the supports for relational continuity, which means building strong relationships between the provider and the client. And this app could help that. Uh, what we know from both clients and providers is that they want to care for the same patient and the patient wants the same provider that they are comfortable with, that they've built a relationship with, that understands their history and their preferences and needs. Administrators have to do a lot of reporting. They have to uh, report to senior um, decision makers and they have to report to health systems. And by collecting this uh, point of care um, information and uh, aggregating it, um, uh, we can essentially share that information with important institutions and bodies like the Canadian Institute of Health Information to make better policies. Ultimately, we want to improve not only the, the care that you receive, but the care within the entire system. So there are a lot of potential other features that may be included within this application, but it's important for us to be able to engage with you to learn more about what you need. So we're excited to um, approach you and to get your feedback um, to learn about what would make our application more usable, what would improve its utility, um, how we could integrate it into your busy lives, if there are any training or capacity issues that we could support you with, uh, and a plethora of other questions that we would love to um, have answers to from you, and then um, translate that into the technology that we provide. I think it's really important to note that as much as we are developing a technology solution, we actually are much more focused on the overall service and the relationships. Our technology solution aims to be patient-centered, inclusive, and humane. Uh, we're not going to be replacing people with technology, but rather we're going to be enhancing um, existing um, um, service delivery models by having technology so we can be more efficient, more accountable, we can improve ex uh, access and availability of services, and so in the end we can improve the quality um, and outcomes of care for you. So I'm really excited to have a much more fulsome discussion with you during my live session. And if you have any questions um, outside of this, please feel free to email me. So I want to wish you um, a wonderful uh, continuance of this conference and uh, let's start talking.
Take care now.